Sedimentary rocks are made out of sediments, which are broken bits of rock. These bits form due to weathering, which is the breakup of rock due to exposure of different processes that take place on Earth. And we're going to talk about those processes right now. The first process is called mechanical weathering, which is where rocks break down, but they don't change their chemical composition, meaning that the rocks are just broken into smaller pieces. This can happen in many different ways. Here are a few. The first is when water gets into the cracks in the rock, and then when it freezes, it's going to expand. And this is called frost wedging, since the frost wedges the bits of rock apart. Plants can begin to grow in the cracks in the rock, and eventually when they grow big enough, they can break that rock apart. As well as animals that begin to dig through rocks will also break it apart. And finally, the last way rocks are broken into smaller pieces is through exfoliation, which is when the surface of the rock is worn away, the underlying rock begins to crack, and sheets of loosened rock break away. This is all mechanical weathering, where rocks are the same, they just break into smaller pieces. The second process is called chemical weathering, where the chemical structure of the rock itself is changed, usually when the rock begins to dissolve. For example, caves and the formations in caves are usually a result of chemical weathering. Chemical weathering of different rocks is going to depend on the composition of the rock, the different minerals that make it up. Some minerals like quartz are more resistant to weathering, while limestone is not. The composition of the rock is also going to affect the rate at which the rock weathers. As the rock weathers, more of the rock underneath it is going to be visible. So now that rock can now be weathered, and so forth. Another thing that's going to affect the rate of chemical weathering is the climate. Warm and wet climate will increase chemical weathering because it will make it easier for rocks to be dissolved. All of this leads to the formation of soil, which is loose weathered rock mixed with biological material, which is something that was once alive, in which plants can then grow. As soil develops, it's going to form different layers, which are called horizon. Topsoil, which is the top darkest layer, contains humus, which is decayed plant and animal remains, the biological material. And underneath that are going to be different layers, and the bottom one is going to be the original rock that began to weather, followed by unweathered rock. Weathered rock is not going to stay in one place, it's going to move. The simplest process is called mass movement, where rocks are moved because of gravity. For example, this image is of a talus, which is where rocks fall off the edge of a cliff. Another example of mass movement because of gravity is creep, which is the slow movement of dirt down a hill, making the poles and fences lean downhill. Another example is slump, when the base of a hill cannot support all that soil that forms on top of it, and it's going to collapse into a slump. And finally, we have mud flow, which is the rapid movement of water that contains a lot of dirt down a hill, and it's going to occur after heavy rainfalls. All this movement affects the fertility, which is the ability of plants to grow in the soil. Depletion is when the nutrients are being removed from the ground, so different methods are used in order to conserve the soil, meaning to save it so that it's still fertile. The first two methods, terrace and contour farming, prevent mass movement, where the soil is going to slide down the side of the hill, as well as windbreakers and strip cropping, which prevent the movement because of wind, which we will discuss when we talk about wind erosion. But that's all you need to know for today. Tomorrow we're going to talk about erosion, which is the movement of rocks because of other processes, for example, water. And for today, please make sure to answer the questions in the form below correctly. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.